Lesson 24 focuses on the question, how are national laws administered in the American constitutional system? It seems pretty obvious that the wide range of laws passed by Congress can't all be administered by the president or the White House. So let's, let's examine what kinds of administrative units exist in the national government to uh, administer laws. So let's talk generally about uh, what is the role of executive departments. Congress understood the great importance of creating administrative agencies uh, back in the 19th century because uh, Congress recognized that it didn't have the time, the resources, the energy to administer all of the laws uh, behind the programs that it created. And so the very first uh, program that it created was in 1887, the Interstate Commerce Commission, designed to regulate, obviously, railroad traffic and other forms of, of travel and business. And so the rise of the administrative state, that is the great expansion of executive agencies, really is a function of the, of the growth of the nation. Uh, the move toward industrialization, uh, the tremendous increase in governmental programs and departments uh, that required executive agencies to administer the laws, to enact policies, uh, to carry out the will of Congress. Can you talk about the role of the executive office of the president and why was it, why was it created? Very important to have that as a means of, of planning uh, budgets as a means of uh, carrying out policies and programs uh, that the president and the president's staff are interested in, and also the, uh, the need to, uh, to administer the laws and to establish minor rules uh, to govern the programs created by Congress. What about independent agencies? What's their role? Independent agencies serve a very important purpose in, in our country, uh, and, and they've not, been the fan, or they've not been the favorite of a lot of Americans. They consist, for example, of the, of the IRS, and they consist of the EPA and other programs, other departments as well. Uh, Justice Jackson of the Supreme Court once said that they derange the separation of powers because these agencies uh, embody legislative, executive, and judicial powers. So, among other things, they will legislate rules to carry out the laws enacted by Congress. They will execute or administer these laws. And then if there are complaints or challenges, they will behave in a judicial way and interpret uh, the, not only the laws that they have just administered, but the decisions that they have applied and hear the complaints. Uh, brought by various figures or organizations, hence the term derangement of separation of powers. Can you talk a little bit more specifically about the quasi-legislative powers that administrators, administrative agencies have and why they have them? Though the administrative agencies, a big part of the administrative state and a big part of the maturation and the growth of the American government, uh, are created by Congress because it lacks the time and the energy and the resources to carry out all of its laws and, the, and desired programs. But more specifically, there's a need to have experts, uh, very bright, dedicated people staffing these administrative agencies who can, in fact, uh, act independently of the two political branches. And if we talked, for example, about the air traffic controllers, if we talked about the EPA, EPA if we talked about the FCC and the ICC, those are areas that most people agree we don't want to be captured uh, by the political parties or the political process. We need to have genuinely independent agencies carrying out the mandates of Congress and, and the rules and regulations enacted by Congress. I just have to ask uh, about the FCC. Is it really nonpartisan? Are there not, they are not the people who run that agency appointed by the president? It's a good question. Uh, the president does appoint people to these agencies and it's hoped that they'll be independent and nonpartisan. But the concern about the lack of partisanship is an old one here in America because the industries that are governed by these agencies do their level best to capture these agencies. And it's an old story in American politics, the struggle for these agencies to remain truly independent, 
truly independent from both the Congress and the President, we should say, because members in Congress uh, who serve on the committees that have jurisdiction over these administrative agencies have their own interests, their own projects, and they often try to influence the agencies. Uh, the executive branch wants to wield control and influence. And then, of course, in the private sector, you have individuals, organizations, and companies and industries who want to try to capture these agencies. So the maintenance of an independent status is, is an ongoing battle. Can you talk a little bit about the quasi-judicial powers that these agencies have? Yes, a number of those agencies have been the subject of great controversies over the course of our, of our history. The quasi-judicial powers wielded is an important uh, power uh, carried out by these agencies as a means of both interpreting the laws of Congress and then uh, adjudicating claims that might be made by organizations or industries or even private persons affected uh, by their decisions. And there have been some celebrated co uh, constitutional cases uh, before the Supreme Court that have had a great influence on, our, on the development of the administrative state. Given that these agencies do have a quasi-legislative role, are there rules that they must follow before they quote-unquote legislate? There certainly are. Congress has required through the enactment of statutes, including the Administrative Procedure Act of 1946, that in fact these agencies have to adhere to a process. When, for example, an agency uh, will promulgate a statute, it, uh, promulgate a rule or a regulation rather, it needs to provide a notice to the affected industries and it also has to hold a hearing uh, to take account of, of the uh, disparate views that might be offered. All of these rules and regulations are published in the Federal Register, which is very important to maintain transparency so that the American people can understand what these agencies are doing. Have the number of agencies grown? I assume the answer to that is yes. And what factors have contributed to this growth? They've grown tremendously, particularly uh, beginning in the Depression era under the administration of President Roosevelt. It reflected the, number one, the great need for more agencies. When the, when the economy bottomed out and the government had to assume a larger role to play uh, in a number of areas, it meant that those programs, those departments had to be created, they had to be administered, Congress had to oversee the regulations and policies, and secondly, the, the very growth of the nation, the move from a largely agricultural economy to an industrialized economy was another major factor. Uh, and the fact is, is that uh, Congress, because it's become more and more busy over the course of our history, uh, deems it necessary to create more agencies to govern, for example, the, uh, the desire to have public sanitation, to govern uh, the uh, nation's highways, to govern air traffic control, to govern the trucking industry. So as our commerce ex has expanded so tremendously, there's been a concomitant need to, to provide for some supervisory authority. 